Hi, congratulations on the purchase of your new MX3-1200 tile and carpet cleaning machine made by uh, Hydroforce and sold here in Australia by Tencent. Firstly, before we start working on our machine and using it, you must read your manual. It's highly important. Get out your manual, read it from front to back. It has all the little information here about how to use your machine, what to do if something goes wrong. It has your spare parts diagrams in here. It also has your chemical breakdown for your chemical injector. It has, tells you how to hook up your hoses, tells you how to hook up your float ball. We're gonna run through all that today, but it's highly important that you do grab this, get your manual, read it. It's everything I'm gonna talk to you about today. Um, and it's all inside this little book. So, let's quickly run through what, what your machine is. On the front of the machine, you've got your vacuum, you have your pressure out which goes to your wand, you have your vacuum switches, so you have individual switches for your vac motors, you have your pressure pump and your pump out pump. Your pump out pump is for your waste, so your dirty water that's going out. This is an overload, if for some reason, if the pressure pump overloads, there's a trip switch here, your pressure gauge to adjust your pressure and your pressure adjuster. So this is an indicator to where you set it at and this is where this actually adjusts it. This is your clean water in hose. You plug your clean water hose in here and this will fill your clean water tank which is in the front. In the front of your clean water tank is a chemical injection system. It works on a float system as the water comes up, picks up the float, the water stops, much like your toilet bowl when the water drops down, water comes in. This also has a chemical injector. This chemical injector will suck pure chemicals, which is this thing. You put this straight into your um, acid rinse or your deodorizer, and you can adjust the dilution rate by changing the tips. Your tips are located in here, and as you can see, we have a turquoise tip. If we were to go to our book, the turquoise tip is about one to 300. This is actually set for the Hydroforce um, Groom acid rinse. But if you have a deodorizer that you wanna add in here or a different type of acid rinse, you can change your dilution rate by looking at your chart and putting in the different dilution rate tips which comes with the machine. So real handy little feature. When you're doing tile cleaning, you need to do some acid rinsing. Um, you can add acid rinse straight into your clean water tank. So a real cool little feature. Let's put this back inside here out of our way. All right, so what else have we got? Wand holder on the front. On the side, you have some brass inserts. You take these out and you can put little clamps on. On the back of the machine, you have your dump valve here. You can dump that into a bucket, into the grass, into the garden, not um, into stormwater. We want this going, we don't want this going into stormwater. Um, back to sewer is a much safer option, um, but definitely not into uh, stormwater. You have your cord holders. You also have wheels on the back of the machine here. This is so you can push your machine up to a van. And as you can see, it's concaved here. Only the two wheels, when we remove our spout, are sticking out. You can then lay this in the machine, roll it in the machine, lift it up onto these wheels, and this wheel and this wheel will push in. So as you can imagine, when you tilt this over, that wheel goes onto the back of your van, lift it up at the back and roll it in. The machine can lay on its back. There's no problem with it laying on its back. It's got a grease um, piston and bearing rather than a oil bath pump. Um, those grease bearing piston pumps can last up to about 1500 hours, so there's no concern about that. When you're plugging your leads in, make sure you plug both the leads into two separate circuits. It's highly important that you do that. Um, preferably the kitchen or and the laundry are the two circuits that you can get in. Most households have two to three circuits in them. Um, it's just in case the household owner is still there and he wants to make a cup of tea or turn on the dryer or something like that to make, ensure that you haven't got all the current going through one circuit in the house. So plug your two different circuits into your two different power points.
continue on with the back the rest of the back of the machine this is your pump out hose so you screw your pump out hose on here and you put that into the grass or into the garden um, and as I said before definitely not into the uh, into this into the storm water so you have your manual dump or your automatic dump and it comes with an automatic dump hose so what comes standard with your machine wand inline filter great great for demonstrations it stops all your grass bits and pieces coming into your machine short hose which clips on your click and go system if you don't like the click and go system you can swap it to the standard soft cut it's just a matter of unscrewing it it comes standard with it okay the click and go is real handy clicks on a wand bag so you can put all your hoses inside here Walk in, hook it on the back of your machine and walk inside to your customer. No, no need to go backwards and forwards. Your pump out hose, 15 metres of pump out hose. So this screws onto the back of your uh, machine, roll it out, and as I said, grass, garden, uh, sewer if you have to, uh, but definitely not into, uh, into stormwater. Your clean water hose, okay? Clean water clicking on the front of your machine, screwing onto the tap, cold water tap or uh, warm water tap. As you can see, it all fitted up. These are Australian fittings, so they'll fit straight onto all our Australian fittings. They come standard with the machine, 15 meters. Your pressure hose, this connects onto your pressure side. And as you can see, that's a male, it's a female, you can't get your connections back to front. You can only click them on one way, same with your wand. So you connect your pressure hose on here. And your vacuum hose, seven and a half meters of vacuum hose. Connect your vacuum hose. Onto your filter. Okay. You then connect both your connections onto your carpet cleaning hose. So before we get started, we either if we're going to have it in manual mode, we fill our water up on the front of the machine here. If we're going to have our automatic mode, we connect our clean water hose to the front of the machine and then we run our hose so the laundry, so the laundry taps inside the um, laundry where the washing machine screws on, you can screw this straight onto there and then if you're going to have it on auto fill you might as well have it on auto dump so connect your auto dump hose to the back of the machine which is here, screw this on here, run your hose into the toilet or off grass or garden. So before you start carpet cleaning, it's highly important you move the furniture out of the way, you pre-vacuum the carpet, um, if you speak to the customer, speak to the customer, ask them what stains are in the carpet, they might actually know. Once you're ready to go, you pre-spray your detergent over the floor, Allow it to sit for five to 10 minutes max. Okay, so you've let your carpet sit for five or 10 minutes, making sure that it doesn't dry out. It's time to start cleaning carpet. Make sure you um, try and start in the furthest point of the room and work your way back to the door. I find it's easier if you set yourself up, make rectangles throughout the room. So if you've got a, if you've got a really long room, work your way all the way back to the doorway. So if we're working in this room, I start in that corner, I work my way back, I then move myself to that side of the room and I move myself back to the door, clean behind the door and then straight out. Uh, for the purpose of the demonstration here today, uh, we're going to clean here. Um, I find the best thing that works for me, um, weight on my front foot, um, pull the trigger backwards onto my back foot until my arm reaches just past my hip, my front foot lifts, let go of the trigger, keep pulling back so I uh, rip, actually suck the water out from where my finger had stopped, move forward, onto my front foot again, you can see my back foot's lifted up off the ground, pull the trigger, 
let go of the trigger, keep pulling to dry it, push forward, pull the trigger, let go, pull the trigger, let go, pull the trigger, let go. I continue doing that right across the room and then I go back over and do a drying stroke. So if you watch my feet, all I'm doing is hobbling backwards and forwards, my arms staying nice and straight, the wand's not moving up or down, it's nice and straight, and all I'm doing is moving, transferring my weight backwards and forwards onto my front foot. Okay, now you can do that left or right handed. So if you get sore on one side or you're doing a really big job, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. So all I'm doing is this, up and down on the floor. Okay, one other thing you'll notice, I'm not leaning on the wand to, to um, push the wand into the surface. This machine's got enough suction and airflow to do, do all the cleaning for you. If you've got a really nasty stain, yes, bite, sure. Hold the trigger down, give it a really good scrub until that stain goes, and do an extra dry, a couple of drying passes over that. So always do drying passes after you've cleaned. Okay, so we've cleaned our carpets. Now we always spot after we've cleaned. There's no point going through and spotting your carpet if majority of it's gonna come out when you're doing your pre-spraying. 90 to 95% of the stains will actually come out with your pre-spray detergent, especially if you've got a good pre-spray detergent like the ones we sell here. Um, once you know, once you get used to it, you'll get to know what each stain is. Uh, but the best person to tell you what the stain is, your customer, ask them. They might say, oh, mum knocked a, a coffee over there, or um, dad had a glass of beer, or whatever it might be, we dropped the sausage with some sauce on it over there. That way you can select the right spotter for the chemical rather than going through each individual one. If you don't know what the spot is, we go through our one to five process that we have, starting at one, working your way through to five, until you get your stain out. Much like our clothes, Sometimes stains don't come out of our clothes, sometimes stains don't come out of our carpet. There is specially ways of getting our stains out and um, once you get more advanced as a carpet cleaner and a spot and, spot and stain remover, you can get a lot of your stains out, but sometimes the stains might involve actually re-dyeing the carpet. So um, it's, uh, it is quite a unique technique that you need to do, um, but you can learn these processes eventually down the track. Okay, so the other half of this machine obviously is its tile cleaning capability. I just showed you the carpet cleaning. Now let's get stuck into the tile cleaning. The difference, the two wands um, have different size hoses. So what you do need to do is the extra cuff that comes with the machine, unscrew the cuff, the one that connects onto the wand. The reason being, this one here is a two inch hose or 51 mil. That one there is only one and a half or 38 mil. So we do need to swap our cuffs over. Unscrew it, as I said. Screw it on. And we're ready to put it onto our machine. Okay, so let's work, walk through some of the features of the SX15. The SX15, is a new unit to the market, now probably 12 months, two years old. Um, its predecessor, the SX12, was a fantastic tool, but what we wanted to do, or what Hydroforce wanted to do, cover a bit more area, a lot better drying, um, that's what they've done with this new, new machine. The way the squeegee system works with the brush, dries the surface within seven minutes, so it's better than mop finish. Uh, the new squeegee rubber with the brush on the outside here. A lot of people have a misconception that the brush does all the cleaning. The brush doesn't do anything other than create the vacuum and support the, support the head itself. It's the bar underneath with the two nozzles. And as you can see, the nozzles are on angles. As the water pressure comes out, the water pressure pushing up, much like a jet, in, jet, or a jet ski, um, pushes these bars around. And these bars spin at 4,000 or 2,000 RPM, so 4,000 revolutions per nozzle. This unit, um, it's easily uh, pulled apart, cleaned. You don't have to use um, screwdriver and bits and pieces. So maintenance shouldn't be an excuse. Uh, you can easily pop the latches here. 
undo your connection, screw these things here, this comes apart, I'm not going to do this right now, um, comes apart so you can easily get um, your brush off. Clean your brush. The other advantage is you can, uh, if, if need be, later down the track, service your um, um, bearing system by replacing the seals and bits and pieces inside. Very easy to get access to. So, uh, really, really, really clever the way it's uh, being made. Okay, so we connect our hose, connect our um, pressure hose. Just before we finish connecting our pressure hose in here, we have a stainless steel gauze filter that protects our nozzles from getting blockages. It's a um, an item that does need to be serviced. It's a matter of putting one spanner here, one spanner there, undoing it and pulling the uh, filter out and cleaning it on a regular basis. How often would I clean it? I'd look at it at least once a month, um, especially if you've got deteriorating hoses or older hoses or you're running your mach running your um, this on an older piece of equipment. Um, it's a really good idea to do it regularly. Okay, so much like our carpet cleaning, we pre-spray our tiles um, first before we start cleaning. Vacuum the tiles first, get rid of all the sand and dirt before you start. Pre-spray the tiles. Um, it's a good idea to um, check which type of cleaner you're going to use. You've so you've got your Viper Venom, your Alkaline Cleaner, and your Viper Peroxy Bright CTG or Concrete Tile and Grout Cleaner. That's your acid cleaner. The Peroxy Bright has a peroxide in it to brighten it up as well. So what's the difference between the two? One's an alkaline, one's an acid. What, where do we use it? Well, the Viper Venom um, is an alkaline detergent, so it's going to break down alkaline-based stains. The Peroxy Bright is an acid, and it's going to break down acid-based stains. Do we have both states of stains sometimes on the surface? Yes. Can we use both at the same time? No. Um, it's best to start with your alkaline, if you've got both types of stains on the surface, and how do you know if you've got both types of stains? It's best to actually do both. Put your Viper Venom on, clean it with your Viper Venom, rinse it all off, put your Viper Peroxy Bright on, clean it all off with your tile cleaning machine, you'll get an amazing result by doing both at the same time. If it's your time savvy, um, best if you don't, if you can't do both with both um, rinses with the unit, Check which cleaner on the floor by doing a test patch. Clean one tile with a little bit of Viper Venom, clean the other tile with a Viper Peroxy Bright. Whichever one cleans the best, use that one for the whole job. If you have some remaining stains that didn't come out with this one, use that one and vice versa. Okay? So kitchens, they're going to have lots of grease and oil and bits and pieces. Um, back doors, they're going to have lots of soil. They're going to have from people walking in and out. The rule of thumb is, much like carpet cleaning, anything that comes from the ground, you use an acid. Anything man-made or, or um, food-based, um, like your eggs and grease and bits and pieces like that, you use your alkaline. So if you keep those two simple rules, you'll, uh, you'll find it nice and easy to do it. But you'll be surprised, some tiles you walk into some place, the tiles are cleaned amazingly with the Viper Venom in this house and the one right next door. The Viper Venom won't touch it and I'll actually clean really well with the opposite one. So each tile is different, best to test them. Um, if you have the time, clean with one first, rinse it all off, clean with the other with the um, acid second, you get a much better result. Okay, so that's your different chemicals, your pre-spray detergent, dilution rates are all on your bottles. Uh, rule of thumb, round one to four for both products will work exceptionally well. So this is a, um, a grout brush, it's actually beveled, so you can get into the grout lines. Traditionally tiles themselves aren't too dirty because uh, they're a glossy, most of them are a glossy finish, a uh, ceramic tile, but it's the grout themselves that makes uh, easier undoing. Majority of your dirt will actually come off the top of the, off the, top of the tiles, and that's normally just um, leftover mop residue from mopping the floor, as you know. Or well, you may not know, with when mopping, we're only leaving dirty water behind, we're not rinsing and we're putting clean water on top of the floor. And when we're pre-spraying the surface here with our detergent, 
Make sure you don't get anything on your skirting boards. If you do get anything on your skirting boards, give them a good wipe over. Um, customers have asked, can I take the skirting boards up? Yeah, of course you can. Um, but it all depends on um, how big the job is uh, and if you want to go that far. But yes, you can certainly take the skirting boards up to protect them. Easiest thing to do, don't spray right up against it. No one walks up against a wall like this, okay? Everyone walks down the middle. So don't go right up to the edges. Use your doodle bug to get up to the edges to scrub the edges and your, and your grout brush. So if you do get on your skirting board, give it a good wipe off with some fresh clean water. Okay, so how do we do it? You may have a pre-spraying detergent onto the floor. Once you've pre-sprayed it on, scrub your grout with your grout brush. Give your edges a good clean and make sure the detergent's right into the tiles, scrub the whole lot. Obviously we haven't got any detergent on the tiles here today, more for demonstration purposes. Give the whole lot a good scrub. So don't chew, um, bite off more than you can chew. Um, about five or ten minutes of dwell time. Don't go and pre-spray the whole house. You want to section it off 20, 15, 10 square metres, depending on how hot it is, how quickly you are. First job, do 10 square metres at a time to get yourself used to it. Then you can get an idea on how much you can cover it all in one go. If the detergent dries out, add more water. Don't add more chemical. Um, it's the water that's evaporating away. So uh, add a bit more water, keep it wet, don't let it dry out. If it dries out, it's really hard to get back off again. Okay, so it's time to rinse off, it's just a matter of turning on your machine and rinsing the surface. So believe it or not, there's a lot of water coming out of here, so you wouldn't think it was in the way the machine operates. It up really well. Much like mowing the grass. So this is, this is the easiest part is just rinsing the surface off. Getting your prep work right first. Rinse the surface off So it's pack up time, uh, it's time to uh, put all your stuff away, clean your machine out, rinse the water out. How do I get the water out of the front of the tank? Real, real easy. Grab your hose, turn your back on. Suck the water out of the front tank, ends up in the back tank. Really, really, really simple. So nice and empty. You obviously can empty your back tank because it's got a duck bell. When you're using your chemicals, make sure you read your material safety data sheets. Very, very important when you're diluting your chemicals. Make sure you put your gloves and your uh, goggles uh, on and an apron if you have one. Um, protect yourself. It's very, very important. We don't want to get any type of uh, chemical burns or um, anything on your skin. Um, Biperoxy brass has got peroxide in it. Peroxide will turn your hair, your skin white. Uh, so highly important that you, uh, with all chemicals, make sure you take the um, safe precautions. Um, I hear you say it's it's going to bleach something. It's not a bleach. It's safety bleach. It will not will not uh, affect any um, cotton or anything like that. It's not going to knock those things around. Um, it's a it's a safe product to use on the tiles. It just brightens it up nice nice and uh, bright. So for cleanup, roll all your hoses up, um, clean your tanks out, um, and leave your lid off so it airs out to dry. So make sure all the water's out of it. Um, when you're disconnecting your hoses, release the pressure in your pressure hose. Um, otherwise, the next time, and as you can probably see here, this hose, this hose has got pressure in it. I can't disconnect it because the last time I used it, it was connected to the 1200 PSI machine. It's got about 1000 PSI of pressure in it. So to get that off, 
If I walked over to the SX15, release the pressure, I now then can disconnect my hose. If you manage to disconnect your hose while it still has pressure in it, it's very hard to get down. Um, you can, I find if you give this a, a tap, as you can see that water came out here, it was still a little bit of pressure, give it a tap, it might, might be a little bit more violent, you might have to give it a good whack to get the pressure out of it. So be careful not to um, damage this. This makes contact with the one inside here. If this is damaged, doesn't work, you need to replace it. So it's highly important. Disconnect your hoses. Give what you give your wand to clean. Wipe down your hoses. Um, pack your machine up, ready to go for the next job. So um, very, very, uh, very easy. Easy carpet cleaning is very similar to tile cleaning. As I said, um, if you follow the basic procedures um, with your with your chemicals, you won't have a problem. Always remember, ask the customer what type of so surface they've got. If they know what type of stain it is, ask them what it is so you can get the best results out of it. Um, always very, very important when you're doing tile cleaning, like with carpet cleaning, wool is uh, obviously susceptible to damage from um, different types of high alkaline detergents. In uh, tile cleaning, it's marble, marble and natural stone. So um, you want to stick away from any high acids when you're doing marble cleaning. That was the Nautilus MX3-1200. Uh, built by Hydroforce and sold by Tencents here in Australia.